Hello again, and welcome back to Operations Management. We're continuing our series on the seven tools of quality. And in this session, we'll talk about cause and effect diagrams. Cause and effect diagrams are also known as fishbone diagrams, and they're also known as Ishikawa diagrams, named after their inventor, Ishikawa. What a cause and effect diagram does is it provides you a graphical technique to help discover causes of problems. Typically, there are a number of spines on a graph, and this graph spines include things like measurements, materials, personnel, environment, methods, machines. Sometimes there's four spines, sometimes there's six spines. Sometimes those spines are a little bit different depending on what kind of area you're working in. But really what they are are providing a way to get you thinking about causes of a particular situation. So we use a cause and effect diagram if we need a structured way to look at a problem. What kinds of causes are out there that could create this particular problem? So let's take a look at a sample. Here we have a diagram that's looking at 4% of double chocolate chip cookies are burnt. So we're going to take a look at a variety of different reasons why this could happen. As I said before, sometimes there's four spines, sometimes there's six spines. And in this one, we have a four spine diagram, one covering machinery, methods, equipment, and people. And if you look carefully at it, we are identifying issues with regard to machinery. Here we have unreliable ovens. We could possibly have broken timers. For methods, maybe we don't have a set cooking time. Maybe the procedure manuals are out of date. For people, too many temporary staff, uh, maybe not enough training. And if there's equipment, maybe some things are inconsistent. So what we're doing is we're using the spines, the titles of those spines, to give us a basis for analyzing why a particular situation is occurring. And then we write on those spines what those causes could be. So it's a great way to think about a situation and think about why this thing is actually happening. So when we use a cause and effect diagram, first thing we have to do is try and specify the effect that we're analyzing. What's the problem? What's the situation? Then by using the categories of the spines for guidance, we consider why the effect is occurring. And then once completed, we're able to look for the likely causes. That's all there is to a cause and effect diagram. And it's one of the best uh, of the seven tools of quality for analyzing why something is actually happening. I'll see you again next time with another tool.